Hello guys, it's Katie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a crochet tutorial for how to make this little bee. So you guys might notice that today is a Wednesday and I randomly have a video up for you guys. So if you missed the announcement at the end of my last video or you missed it on my community tab as well or on my Instagram story, actually, I posted a lot of places, but if you missed the announcement, the month of March on my channel, I do a thing called Creative Crochet Month where I upload extra videos every Wednesday of the month of March. Because March is National Crochet Month, as well as March is the anniversary each year of when I started my YouTube channel, this year will be three years of me posting videos every single week. So because of all of that, I post the extra videos. This year you guys are getting five extra videos because there are five Wednesdays in the month of March this year. So. I will be posting extra videos. Today is of course the bee tutorial and you guys have other tutorial style, crochet style videos to look forward to for the extra videos. So with that though, let's go ahead and get started on the tutorial. So this bee is a free pattern that you guys can find available on my Instagram and my Ribbler. So if you prefer to just read written patterns instead of watching a tutorial, then those will be linked below for you. But if you are more so a beginner and you want to watch the tutorial, that is what today's video is. Now, this is like a beginner tutorial, but I wouldn't say an absolute beginner tutorial. If you have never crocheted anything before, I recommend checking out the links below. I'm going to link every single stitch and technique that is used for this pattern as an in-depth tutorial linked below for you guys. And this video is more so if you've crocheted before, I'm just telling you how to do each stitch as kind of a reminder, but not necessarily meant for if you've never crocheted at all. So for this little bee, of course, you're going to need yarn. So I used Parfait Chunky Yarn in the colors white, black, and sunshine now i do have a 10 percent off link for this yarn if you guys want to use it it is only for regular price so if it's already on sale as you're watching this then you can't use the 10 percent off at the same time but the 10 percent off for premier yarns is always included in the description box of my videos so if you want to use the same exact yarn as me and you don't already have that yarn then you can go ahead and use that it just gives me their reward points so that i can get discounts on my own purchases but it also gives you a discount so it's a win-win so i always like to mention it but anyways obviously the yarn and then you need a crochet hook i use a five millimeter with this yarn but depending on your attention and what you like to use with particular yarns you can use whatever hook size you want but again i use five millimeter you're also going to need a yarn needle and a stitch marker you also need safety eyes. These are 12 millimeter safety eyes. I get them on Amazon. I will link them below for you guys. I also use a little bit of E6000 glue to secure my eyes. So I will link that below for you as well. That part is optional, but since I sell my plushies, I like to make sure that the eyes are super secure. So that's why I do that. And I explain that part when we're adding the eyes in the tutorial, so don't worry. And then the final item that you should need is just stuffing. I use polyfill, so that's what's going to be linked below for you guys. All the exact materials that I use are going to be what's linked below for you, but of course you can make it with whatever you have. It doesn't even have to be a yellow bee if you want it to be like a purple bee or blue or whatever you have works. Just make sure you adjust your hook size based off of your yarn if you're using a different type of yarn. But Anyways, with that, let's go ahead and get started on making this bee. All right, you guys, so we're starting out with the yellow yarn. I have my stitch marker and my hook right here. So as of right now, you don't need the stitch marker, so I'm just gonna set this off to the side and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So first, you want to make a magic circle or a magic ring, whichever one you want to call it. It is the same technique. There's multiple different ways you could do it, but I am going to show you the way I like to do it. So I'm going to take the yarn tail, which the yarn tail is this end, and then the working end refers to the end that is attached to my skein of yarn over here. So I'm right-handed, so taking the tail, I place it over my pointer and my middle finger, and then I wrap it around. 
So I wrap it around the back of those two fingers and make an X shape in the front. So it should look something like that. And I use my thumb to hold this tail down. So now flipping my fingers over, you can see there is two strands here. So I'm going to take my crochet hook and push up on this first loop and grab the second one and pull that under. Then you're going to twist your crochet hook and grab this working end right here and pull that through the loop you just made. And here's the magic circle where you will be working six single crochet into the magic circle. So I go ahead and insert my hook into the magic circle and yarn over. So yarning over refers to wrapping the yarn around your hook and then pulling up a loop, which refers to grabbing it and pulling it up like that. And then I'm going to yarn over again and pull through the two loops on my hook, which that has created one single crochet. So now I'm going to do that five more times for a total of six. So again, insert my hook into the circle, yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over and pull through the two to where there is one left on your hook. Now again, insert into the circle, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through two. So right now I have three single crochets, so I'm gonna do the last three really quickly here. So now that I have six single crochets, I'm just gonna count to double check that there are six, which it is one, two, three, four, five, six, just counting the little V shapes that it makes at the top. So there are six total. So now I'm going to take this yarn tail that is hanging down and pull this. So once I pull it, you can see that it is getting tighter and that has created your magic ring to where there is no gap in the center of your stitches. So now the next step is going to be to slip stitch into the first single crochet. So you wanna find that first stitch you did, which for me is right here. So you're going to insert your hook underneath that, which is underneath both loops. So make sure you're going under both of them. And then you want to yarn over and pull that all the way through all the loops on your hook. And that has created a slip stitch. So now I'm going to take my stitch marker and place this in that slip stitch I just made, which is right here behind my hook. And I'm going to just leave that right there as I continue working. Now, as I work in rounds, I keep the stitch marker in the last stitch of each round. So that is what I'm gonna be doing throughout this tutorial. Now for round number two, the next step is to increase in each stitch, which would be six increases since you have six single crochets. So what this is going to be is single crocheting two in each stitch. So this next stitch I have is right here to work into. So I'm going to insert my hook again under both loops, making sure that it is under both loops. And I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and now there's two on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. So that has made one single crochet. And now you want to go into the same exact stitch that you just worked into and insert your hook again, yarn over, pull up that loop. Now there's two on your hook, so you want to yarn over again and pull through those two. So that has created two stitches, as you can see, one and two, and that is the first increase. So now let's go ahead and do the second one. You're gonna be working into the next stitch, which for me is right here. So I'm going to be inserting my hook again under both loops, and then I'm going to be yarning over and pulling up that loop and 
yarning over again and pulling through the two to make one single crochet. And now to do the second single crochet, I'm going to be inserting my hook, yarning over and pulling up that loop, and then yarning over again and pulling through both loops to make that second single crochet. And now I'm going to continue this all the way around. You should be doing this four more times. For me, it would be one, two, three, and then the fourth time would be in this stitch where the stitch marker is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, and then I'll be back to you for the third round. All right, so I'm still working on round two, and I have done three more increasing stitches. So I'm now going to do the fourth and final one. So I'm removing my stitch marker here. So I'm again inserting my hook into the stitch where I just removed that stitch marker. Then I am yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over and pulling through two. And then again, I am inserting my hook into the same stitch, yarning over, pulling up that loop, yarning over and pulling through two to create that last increasing stitch. And I am going to pick up my stitch marker again and place that in this last stitch that I just made. So now that is the final stitch for round two. So now we're moving on to round three. So round three is going to be one increase and then one single crochet and repeating that all the way around. So let me show you that. So again, an increase is just like what we did all of the last round. So you're going to insert your hook into that first stitch and yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Then in the same stitch, because again, the first one is an increase, you are inserting your hook, yarning over, pulling up the loop, yarning over and pulling through two. So that has created one increase. So now for the next stitch, you are doing just one single crochet. So you're going to insert your hook, yarn over and pull up that loop, then yarn over and pull through two. Now moving on to the next stitch, it is again an increase. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through two. And again, in this same stitch, since it is an increase, you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, and pull that up, and then yarn over and pull through two. So that has created another increase. So again, we're doing just one single crochet in the next. So that is going to be inserting your hook, yarning over, pulling up the loop, yarning over, pulling through two. So I'm now going to be repeating this process all the way until I'm back to the stitch marker again. All right, so I've done my last increasing stitch. So now in this last stitch where the stitch marker is, I need to do one single crochet. So I'm removing that stitch marker and again, placing just one single crochet right here. And I'm going to immediately just put this stitch marker back in that stitch I just made. So now moving on to the next round, you can probably guess that the next round is increase and then two single crochets, since that is the recurring theme for most amigurumi patterns. So first I'm going to be doing that first increase. So in this first single crochet, you want to insert your hook, again yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over and pull through two. And then you want to, again, in that same stitch, since it is an increasing stitch, you want to insert your hook, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through two. And then you want to do just two regular single crochets, no increasing in the next two stitches. So you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch then you're going to yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through two. And in the next stitch, you're going to again, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through two. 
So now you're just repeating this throughout this whole round. So again, I'll come back to you when I'm back at the stitch marker. Okay, so I just removed the stitch marker from this last stitch and I have the one single crochet left to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to place the stitch marker back in this stitch. And this next round is the last increasing round. So it's going to be one increase and then three single crochets. So in this first stitch, you're going to again insert your hook under both loops, yarn over and pull up that loop. Then yarn over again and pull through two. Then you're going to insert your hook again, yarn over and pull through two. And that way you have two in the same stitch. And then you're going to do three single crochets in the next three stitches. So it's going to be one in the next, two, which is in that next one, and then three in this next one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this off camera again until I am back at the stitch marker. Okay, so I went ahead and removed the stitch marker, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this last single crochet right here and replace that stitch marker. So now the next two rounds, rounds six and seven, are going to be just single crocheting in each stitch, no increasing or anything like that. So you're just going to be inserting your hook into that first stitch, then yarning over and pulling up the loop, and then now that you have two on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through the two. And then you're gonna be inserting into the next stitch and repeating that all the way around until you get to the stitch marker. And that will be round six done. And then you will do that one more time to complete round seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera. And then after round seven, I'll show you what's next. Okay, you guys, so this is the end of round seven. I have done six and seven, and I have one last stitch to do. I removed the stitch marker already, but I did want to show you how to change colors because that's what we're doing. And I do this in the last stitch of the previous round. So for round eight is when you do the first round of black. So for the last stitch of round seven, you're going to, as normal, insert your hook into that stitch and yarn over and then pull that loop through. And now that there's two on your hook, you're going to leave those two and you're going to drop the yellow yarn and go ahead and grab your black yarn. And here I still have the two loops on my hook. I have the black yarn. So I just place this on top, leaving a little bit of a tail. And then I just go ahead and put that on the hook Hold it kind of tight with your other fingers and pull it through the two loops that are here on your hook. And then once you've done that, go ahead and tighten the yarn here, the yellow yarn that is still attached to the yellow skein of yarn. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my stitch marker again and place it right here in this last yellow stitch. And then for rounds eight and nine, we are just doing one single crochet in each stitch around without using the yellow, just the black. So I am keeping the yellow attached, but I am not working with it. I am just leaving it down here and only working with the black. So again, to just do a single crochet, you're going to insert your hook under both loops and then you're going to yarn over, again this time using the black yarn, and pull up that loop. And then you're going to yarn over again and pull that through two. Now that one stitch might be loose there. What you can do for that is just pull on this black tail that is left. And now that we've tightened that first stitch, I'm just going to keep going all the way around, doing just one single crochet in each stitch for the next two rounds so we will get to the stitch marker once and then go one more time until we're back to the stitch marker so i will come back to you once i am done with this okay you guys so here is rounds eight and nine 
almost done. I have one more stitch here and then we'll be changing colors again. But I want to go ahead and take a break to add the eyes and show you how I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up on this loop that my crochet hook is still in and just set the hook off to the side for a minute so I can go ahead and add the eyes. So I have 12 millimeter eyes and the backs that they came with. I'll link this exact one on Amazon below for you guys. So I have two eyes and two backs and I actually have some E6000 which I'm going to show you my little life hack that I've been doing recently to keep the eyes in place. So first for the placement you can place them wherever you think they look best. Where I place my eyes for this B pattern is specifically between rounds three and four. So you can count one, two, three, four. So this would be between three and four right here. And I'm just going to place the first one right there. And then again, you would count one, two, three. So right here would be between three and four. And I like them to be kind of diagonal like this. So this is about seven stitches apart. It so if you want to count exactly how many stitches it is apart, you can do that. Or you can just, of course, eyeball it and see how you like it. So now that I've placed the eyes, of course, you need to add the backing. So you want to be 100% sure that you like where the placement is before you go ahead and place these backs. So what I'm going to do is flip my work inside out, which looks kind of funny. But this is how I add the backs. And what I do to secure them is take my E6000, I like using this little tube of it because it fits perfectly here for the eye backs. And I just go ahead and add some glue. And then this eye back is just going to be placed right on top of the safety eye and just push it down until you hear it click. Which there's mine. And I'm going to add the glue to the second one and then place that on there as well. So again, go ahead and place this eye back onto the back of the eye. And then push this down as you're pushing the front of the eye with your other hand. And then you can hear that click. And now your eyes are on so you can just flip your work back out again and we're going to continue working. All right, so now we're going back to crocheting. So I have this one big loop here. So I've inserted my hook and I'm just going to pull on the working end of the black yarn to tighten it again. And then I'm going to be removing this stitch marker and placing it off to the side here to do this last single crochet and change back to yellow. So again, you're going to insert your hook, make sure it's under both loops. Then you're going to yarn over and pull up the loop. And then you're going to, instead of taking the black yarn, grab the yellow yarn that is still attached to your project and go ahead and do the same color changing technique that we did earlier, where you just yarn over with this color and pull through the two loops and then use the working end that is still attached to the black yarn to pull it tight and you can also pull the yellow yarn again just to tighten it some more and then I'm going to go ahead and take this stitch marker place it back on and then you're going to do just one round around in yellow until you get back to the stitch marker so just one single crochet in each stitch, just like we've been doing. No increases, just one in each. Okay, so now we are back to the stitch marker. And I'm going to be removing the stitch marker again and setting it down. And now we're doing this last stitch where we are changing back to black. So I'm going to insert my hook under both loops, yarn over and pull up that loop. And then instead of yarning over with the yellow, we're going to set the yellow back down and grab this black that is still attached and yarn over with this and pull it through the two loops. And then I'm going to pull on the yellow and the black yarn to tighten it, grab my stitch marker 
and add it to the stitch I just made. And then I'm going to continue doing rounds of just one single crochet in each stitch, this time for two more rounds. So this will be rounds 11 and 12. So I will come back to you once I have completed these rounds as well. All right, here we are again with two more rounds of black and I'm at the stitch marker. So I'm just removing the stitch marker and inserting my hook into this last stitch and pulling up a loop with the black yarn. And for the last time, I am changing back to yellow. So I'm going to be yarning over with the yellow and pulling the loop through and then tightening with both colors, grabbing the stitch marker and putting it back in that last stitch. And then going ahead and doing two more rounds of just one single crochet in each stitch, this time with just the yellow yarn instead of the black. And at this point we're done with the black, so you can go ahead and cut the black yarn. I like to leave a little bit of a tail. And then on the inside of the project you can see where we started with the black yarn and ended with the black yarn. I like to go ahead and tie this together just to make sure that it is secure on the inside. It doesn't need to be like a super tight knot or anything to where your stitches on the outside look messed up, but you can go ahead and just tie it to make sure it's secure. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with just doing one single crochet in each stitch in yellow for this round and the round after, which will finish off round number 14 at the end of that. All right, you guys, so I just removed the stitch marker. So now I'm doing the last single crochet in this round. And this is round 14 done now. So now I'm going to replace the stitch marker and we're gonna start with decreasing rounds, which I prefer to do invisible decreases. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you in this video. I will link a tutorial for both invisible decreases and regular decreases. So whichever one you'd like to do. And I am going to go ahead and start out with round number 15. So starting for round number 15, you are starting out with a decreasing stitch. So you're going to insert your hook. Now, instead of inserting under both loops like we've been doing, which looks like this, you're going to insert your hook under just the first loop like this. And then instead of yarning over right now, you're going to in the second stitch, also insert your hook only in that first loop. So it should look something like this. And then now is when you're going to yarn over, pull through those two loops. And then after that you yarn over and pull through those two to create a single crochet invisible decrease. So now you're just going to do three regular single crochets. So it's just going to be inserting your hook, yarning over, pulling up the loop, yarning over, pulling through two, and then one and two more single crochets for a total of three. And then we're going to be doing another invisible decrease. So again, you're going to insert your hook into that first loop only, and then you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, again only the front loop of that stitch to where it looks something like this, and then again yarn over and pull through those stitches to where there's two on your hook, and yarn over and pull through those two to create the next invisible single crochet decrease. So now again you're going to do one, two, and three single crochets and then you're going to do the invisible decrease three more single crochets and continue on with this until we're back at the stitch marker is when i will come back to you guys okay now i'm back to the stitch marker so again removing that placing the last single crochet into this stitch and then going ahead and adding that stitch marker again so now we are on to the next round, which is going to be 
invisible decrease and then two regular single crochets and repeating that all the way around. So again, the invisible decrease is done by inserting your hook into the front loop of one stitch and then immediately inserting your hook into the front loop of the very next stitch and then yarning over, pulling that through both of those, then yarning over again and pulling through the two and then you're going to do two regular single crochets in the next stitches, so one here and another one here and then repeating that all the way until we're back at the stitch marker again. Okay, so I have my last single crochet to place in this last stitch, so I'm going to do that and then again replace the stitch marker and now is when I'm going to start stuffing the body. So what I like to do is again pull up this loop pretty tall, that way it doesn't come undone and then we're just going to grab some stuffing and stuff it basically until you are happy with the shape. Okay, so here is what the B body looks like stuffed. I may add a little bit more stuffing, but I may also just leave it. We'll see as I continue to close up. But right now I'm going to do the next decreasing round, which is one decrease and then one single crochet. So again, doing invisible decreases, which is inserting your hook into the front loop of the first stitch and then the very next stitch, also inserting your hook into that front loop and then yarning over and pulling that through the two loops there and then yarning over and pulling that through those two loops. So now that's one invisible decrease. So now I'm going to be doing a regular single crochet. So just in the next one, yarning over, pulling up the loop, yarning over and pulling through two. And then I'm going to be doing another invisible decrease and then one single crochet. Another invisible decrease and then one single crochet. And repeating that all the way around just like we've been doing with the other rounds. All right, so I just did my last invisible decrease. So now I'm gonna do my last regular single crochet, which I'm just removing the stitch marker and then going ahead and placing that right there and replacing the stitch marker again. And now for this whole last round, I'm going to be doing invisible decreases. So I'm going to, again, insert my hook into that front loop only of the first stitch, then insert my hook into the front loop only of that next stitch, then yarn over and pull through both of those loops, then yarn over and pull through those two to create the single crochet. And I'm doing that again. So now I'm just inserting my hook into the front loop of that next stitch, and then of the stitch next to that, inserting my hook into that front loop of that stitch, yarning over, and then pulling through those two loops, then yarning over and pulling through. And I'm going to continue that until I'm at the stitch marker again. Okay, so I actually have two stitches left until I'm at the stitch marker, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the stitch marker because, of course, to do an invisible decrease, you need two stitches for it. So I'm again inserting my hook into that front loop of the next one and inserting into the front loop of the one after that and yarning over, pulling through both of those loops and then yarning over and pulling through those two loops. So now is when we're going to close up the body. If you want to add any more stuffing in this little hole, you can. But for me, I think I'm happy with this, so I'm just going to be finishing off and closing it up. So to finish off, you are just going to leave quite a bit of a tail just so we can sew it closed. So we'll say somewhere around like that amount. And I'm just going to cut the yarn and then my hook is still in this last stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, pull that through this last stitch and just keep pulling until it has gone all the way through. 
and then just tighten this and that is how you finish off so now we're going to close up which for this you need your yarn needle so for this you need your yarn needle and you need the tail that you just left so I'm going to take the tail and I like to pinch it kind of like that that way you can insert that into the yarn needle a little bit easier and then pull that up and now just to close it up you're going to weave in and out of each of these stitches you have left just to close up this hole so as you can see I'm just going under all of these stitches each one back and forth until I've done them all and then I'm just gonna pull tight once I've done all of them so now that I've done that you obviously still have a little bit of this end left most likely so you want to go ahead and just weave this back and forth to weave in the end because you want it to be secure you don't want to just cut it off to where these stitches might come undone so I'm going to just go ahead and go back and forth kind of randomly just underneath the stitches until I have weaved in pretty much the whole end now if you do have a longer end that's longer than this you could just cut it off you just want to cut close to the stitches but obviously don't cut your stitches be careful that you don't do that so now that I've gone back and forth a few times I'm just going to actually take the back of this yarn needle and use it to poke the tail end into the project that way I don't have to cut super close to my stitches and maybe accidentally cut the project so now that we have the bee body let's go ahead and move on to white for the wings so with the white again we are starting with a magic circle or a magic ring it is the same process that I showed you starting for the bee body but I will go ahead and show you again briefly that I like to leave the yarn tail over my pointer and my middle finger and then wrap it around the back and make an X shape right here and then hold this with my other fingers here and flip this over take the crochet hook push up on this end and grab the second loop and then twist and then with your working end you're going to grab this yarn and pull through so that has made your magic ring again so now you're going to do six single crochets in the magic ring so again just like we started the B body you're going to insert your hook into the ring and yarn over with the working end pull up a loop yarn over and pull that through and you're going to do that five more times for a total of six times now that you've done that six times you're going to grab this yarn tail and pull it tight sometimes it's hard to do with these chenille yarns so don't mind me struggling a little bit but anyways now you're going to do that slip stitch into the first single crochet so you're going to insert your hook under both loops of the first single crochet and then you're going to yarn over and pull that through all of the loops now is where I will again add the stitch marker and go ahead and place it in that stitch we just made now again just like for the B body you're going to increase in each stitch around for this next round so you're going to insert your hook under both loops of the next stitch yarn over pull up the loop yarn over and pull through two to make that first single crochet and in that same stitch that you just worked in you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull up the loop yarn over and pull through two and then repeat this process until you're back at the stitch marker I did the last stitches and also put the stitch marker back in so now we are starting on round three which is going to be an increase and then one single crochet so just like we were doing for the B body 
it is going to be insert into the first single crochet yarn over pull up that loop yarn over pull through two and then into that same stitch you just worked into to create an increase you're going to insert your hook yarn over pull up the loop yarn over pull through two then in the next single crochet stitch from the previous round you're going to insert your hook under both loops yarn over pull up the loop yarn over pull through two and repeat that all the way around again until you are back at the stitch marker okay so i just did that last single crochet so now i'm putting the stitch marker back in and for this last round of the wing you are going to just single crochet all the way around so no increasing or decreasing at all you're just going to insert your hook under both loops and yarn over pull up that loop yarn over pull through two and again in the next one insert your hook under both loops yarn over pull up the loop yarn over pull through two and just continue that all the way around until you're back at the stitch marker okay so now i have the last stitch left so i'm just removing the stitch marker and then doing the last one and now we're going to be finishing off because that was the last round for the wings so again to finish off just like we did for the body you want to leave a long tail but probably even longer than before because we're going to use this to sew it on so i'm going to leave about that amount and cut this right here and then again my crochet hook is still in my work so i'm going to just yarn over and pull this all the way through and then pull it tight to tighten it now that is one wing done i'm going to go ahead and do the second one off camera using the same exact stitches so you can go ahead and rewind in this video to follow the steps over again and then i'll be back to show you how to attach them to the body all right so i went ahead and sewed the first wing on so you guys can see what it looks like and i have the second wing made right here so i'm going to go ahead and show you how to attach it so i have my yarn needle and the wing of course and i'm starting out with this end that is from the center where we started instead of starting with this end and i'm going to add this to my yarn needle the same way that i did earlier when closing up the b body and then what i like to do is actually weave this in through my stitches to join it to where i finished off so that way the two ends line up and then pull it all the way through and as you can see the two ends are now right here together so now i'm going to go ahead and take the b body now as you can see for attaching the wings you want to make sure that they're of course on top and align with the eyes and then attach it in between the stripes here so it's up to you if you want to leave a little gap or if you want to put them right next to each other sometimes i like to leave a little gap sometimes i put them right next to each other it honestly just depends but for this one i'm just going to go ahead and take this end that is still on my yarn needle and insert it right here pretty close to the first wing that i already sewed on and kind of just under that one stitch there push that through and then is when I'm removing this end from the yarn needle and I'm going to take this end and the other end that I left here and tie them is what I start out with that way the wing is just already in place and then you can just sew it on a little bit easier so I'm just doing that and then taking this shorter end and I'm going to go ahead and tuck this in using the same method that I showed you earlier where I use the back of the yarn needle and kind of just poke this down is what I do 
to kind of hide the end without having to go through the whole process of weaving it in or cutting it off and accidentally cutting your stitches. So now I just have this longer end here and I'm again going to put this on my yarn needle and now is where I start to sew this down because of course this isn't super secure. So I'm going to go ahead and just weave this in to some nearby stitches and pull it through and then weave it into the wing and pull it through. So I'm just continuing doing like this and kind of even going through the back at some points to just make sure it is super secure and not going to move around too much and then I will show you once I'm done here how the final product looks. Okay so now that I've weaved this back and forth quite a few times and I'm happy with how the second wing is attached I'm going to just do the same method where instead of going back and forth and weaving it in and all of that I'm just going to use my yarn needle and poke this end in kind of close by to where the wing is that way it's not noticeable and specifically doing it on the back side that way it's not noticeable alrighty so now that I have done that here is what the final little bee looks like. So I hope you guys have enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful to of course make your own little bee as well. Thank you guys so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful to make your own little bee. If you did enjoy today's video, please do give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of today's tutorial. And if you want to, tag me on Instagram. I'm at Katie Being Creative Everywhere. So tag me in pictures of your bees or send me a DM with the picture of your bee. I always love to see your creations using my tutorials and my patterns. So definitely feel free to reach out. I would love to see your little bees. And now if you guys want to make sure you don't miss out on any future tutorials I'm posting as well as other videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the post notification bell that way you know every single time I upload a brand new video. Liking and subscribing and commenting on my videos really does help on my channel so thank you in advance if you do any of those things. Now if you guys do want to see more from me you can always check out more videos of mine, my blog, my Etsy shop, my Rebler shop, all of my social medias and my second channel all of that is always included in the description box of every single video for you guys so with all of that thank you guys so much for watching today's video and i will see you guys here in the next one goodbye